Joining us now to discuss today's top stories is the president of Investor Advantage, John Grace, and business analyst and entrepreneur, Tom Maoli. Let's start with you, Tom. We've got this incredible run in the stock market, and now we're getting even more and more indications that consumer spending is going strong. Consumers are feeling very confident. How confident are you that the streak can continue? Well, they should be confident. I mean, you know, we have the the, high, the lowest unemployment rate in the history of the country. Interest rates are down. I own new car dealerships. My, my showrooms are busting at the seams. Service departments are busting at the seams. It's a great time to be in business, and it's a great time to be in America. I I think we have a melt up going on in the stock market. I think there's a lot of cash sitting on the side. A lot of people made a lot of money and they need to put it to work. They need to earn. Where are they going to get, you know, the returns? If you look at fixed income, they're still low. They're two and 3%. They're, they're putting it at risk. They need to make, they need to earn with it and they're doing it. It's, it's clear. The market continues to rise so day after day. So you are day. very confident that the Santa rally is going to continue and well into the next year. Oh, well into the next year. I'm bullish into 2020. I think, you know, the, the headwinds that, that the market had and it, and it did great, uh, you know, with the headwinds. But the headwinds that the market had are dissipating. You know, you have the impeachment over. Clearly, they're not. Well, it's it's, it's not over. Well, but it's it's on the shelf. Well, it's it's delayed, which in itself may cause some complications. But the House did vote they to did impeach vote. the president. We're waiting for the impeachment managers to be assigned and for this to be formally assigned to the Senate. But it's interesting that on the day the president of the United States gets impeached. Only the third time in U.S. history, yes. markets hit markets a record hit. high, and the same thing the next day. Right, exactly. But I, I, What does that tell you? I just, it just tells me that I don't think the, that the American public or the consumer cares. I don't think they think that the, the president is going, it's going to get through the Senate. I, I don't think he's going to get impeached, and I think he's going to get reelected, if you want to know my honest opinion. So, you know, listen, we have the China trade deal that, you know, no one's talking about anymore. It's dissipating. He's, he's making a deal behind the scenes. It's going to happen. Do you think so? Do, oh, you, I know. do you think that this time it's really a deal or is it more of a Christmas truce? Because there have been close calls before and then what happens, the Chinese get the, the, the final agreement and then they pull out the red pen, start making changes, crossing things out and things that were supposedly agreed upon weren't agreed upon. Well, listen, the devil's always in the details, but I think that the president has, has shifted his, um, you know, his focus on getting a deal done. I think he's more flexible. I think he's, he's going to get a deal done. You know, when I, was on the, when I was on the show a couple weeks ago with you, I said the same thing. He's going to get a deal done. He's a smart man. He knows what he's doing. He's going to negotiate as far as he can negotiate and he'll take half because that's what you're doing when you're negotiating a deal. So when you say take half, that means you're very clear that this phase one deal doesn't touch the big issues, the important issues of intellectual property violations, the forced data transfers as we know. When a U.S. company wants to do business in China, it has to partner up with a Chinese company and transfer Absolutely. its data to them. So you think this is not going to be touched on the deal? I don't think it's any of that's going to be, be touched. On, on, China, on trade. By the way, starting today, China has already started buying, buying our, in huge amounts our agricultural products. But, but, but when you start talking about intellectual property and trade and technology, you're playing the game of operation. I don't know. When I was a kid, I used to play the game of operation, and you hit the, the, the side, yeah, and, yeah. right? That's where you're talking about. That is a very sensitive subject. I think that's going to take a long time to work out there it, you know that is a very complex issue I think what we're gonna do is is he's gonna focus on the major issues he's gonna get trade back going we're gonna get rid of this tariff issue and 2020 I think we're off to the right, races Tom, so, so first before we get in, back to that whole uh, game of operation metaphor yeah. which I kind of like <laughs> if the US is now demanding that China ups its purchases of US goods I believe that figure is 200 billion that's right that's right where does that come from in terms of other countries? Because there's going to be an imbalance considering that China's probably getting that from some other place around the globe. So who are the losers if China shifts focus to the U.S.? And, and then what could that mean for those countries' relationships with China? Well, I, listen, I, I, I don't think that they're analyzing it to, to the nth degree the way you're discussing it. I absolutely agree. But you're talking about they're, they're going to get, they're buying that agri agricultural product from multiple sources. And yes, people are going to lose a portion of that business. But I think China, China has the same incentive that we do. They want to make a deal with the U.S. You know, we, we are a large, large buyer of their services. We, you know, we, we do a lot of trade with China. I right. don't think they want to have us as an enemy. All right. I mean, you could argue that it's a wasted opportunity with the U.S. economy this strong for the president to not push ahead 
and get a more comprehensive deal. Let's bring John Grace into this. John, I want to get your thoughts in terms of where we are with these astounding consumer economy numbers and, of course, the market doing so well. How do you think investors should be responding to this? What's your advice to them? Well, let's start with the consumers, Michelle. I mean, the fact of the matter is everybody's uh, so high on the income and it's not as good for some people as it is for others. But for the majority of folks where they're on the lower end of the spectrum, the uh, consumption is a, is a combination of some income, not really strong income for many people, and a lot of debt. The debt levels for consumers is higher than it's ever been by about two or three trillion dollars relative to just 2008. So that's the first piece of the puzzle. As far as the market is concerned, we really got to figure out how to protect one's profits because who knows what the next year might turn around to be worse or, you know, not. So make, does that mean you'd, 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 you'd advise investors to sell at this point? No, what we advise investors to do is, number one, figure out what kind of risk they can accept. In other words, how much loss are okay. you willing to take in your portfolio? And then see if you can design the portfolio to perform within your loss parameters. That way you won't go through shock and awe when the market does become unglued again. Well, it's inevitable, I guess, at some point. Uh, what goes up must go down. Thank you so much, John Grace, Tommy Oli. Appreciate it. All right, still ahead, the 2020 Democratic presidential.